Hi friend, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about a topic that many of you asked me and it's the salaries of data scientists in the UK especially in 2024. So to define what salary data scientists get, there are a few things that we need to consider. And we're going to go through five elements that will help you identify what salary you might get depending on where you are in your journey, the location, the industry, the work environment and all these things. So here are the five elements we're going to talk about today. Number one is experience level. Number two is the work environment. Number three is the sector. Number four, we're going to talk about some other considerations. And number five, I will share with you my own earnings and how much I earn as a data scientist. If this sounds good to you, let's dive into it. Number one, experience level. Obviously, interns won't be paid as much as graduates and graduates won't be paid as much as juniors and junior data scientists won't be paid as much as senior data scientists. So it just makes sense. But obviously here we're going to talk about broadly what's the average that each and every category earns. So on average, an intern data scientist can earn around £23,000 a year on average. When a graduate can earn something around 30000 maybe between twenty eight and thirty three, depending on the industry, the city and all these things. A junior will earn somewhere between thirty-five to forty thousand pounds a year, also depending on so many factors that we're going to discuss throughout this video. And seniors can really go up to a hundred thousand. It really depends what senior, in which industry, which sector. Some sectors pay way more than others, which we're going to discuss later on in this video. Number two is work environment. So working for a startup. It's not the same as working for a big corporate. So usually startups pay a little bit less than a big corporate. For example, working for Amazon, you can see these high salaries of 100,000 plus. If you work in a small startup, you'll get way less than that. It's usually 10, 15 to 20% less working for a startup than working for a big corporate. But in my opinion, you can get more experience and more responsibilities working in a startup because they put so much trust in you and you have more responsibilities. But when you work for a big corporate, you're part of a big, big, big picture and you're just a small player in it. Even though you might be a big data scientist, but you're not as important for the overall company since they have tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of employees. So on average, a junior entry level in a startup is between 30 to 45,000 and can go up to £80,000 a year when you're more senior. However, when you go into the big corporates, it directly starts with 40, 45000 for a junior and can go as high as £120,000, £130,000 a year. One thing to remember here is that usually startups can give you a bit of equity in the company. So that's something worth considering. If you work for a small startup or plan to work for a small company, and you think that that company will grow massively over the years and if you don't believe so i think it's not even worth considering working for them but if you do then ask for some equity and that equity will translate and turn into money over time and leverage that you can use as well so yeah you might get less salary working for a startup but you might get some equity and that equity can turn into potential money and resources you can use over time number three is the sector and here is very important because working in tech, working in finance, working in sports, healthcare, uh, governments, public sector, they're not the same in terms of pricing. In finance, you have from 50,000 to 150,000, even more sometimes, salaries from junior entry level into the highest seniors in the financial industry. The tech comes just closer. It's from 40,000 to 120,000 working in tech and other categories go lower and lower and lower and you'll be surprised or not that the public sector and the government usually pay the less. So you have between 30,000 and up to 70,000, 75,000 even for the highest senior people in their company. Four, other considerations. So when you apply for data science jobs, usually you have to consider a few other things. We already talked about the level of experience, then we talked about the work environment, if it's a startup or a corporate. And number three, we talked about the sector. These are all important things to consider. But there are a few others, such as the city. For example, working in London wouldn't be the same as working in Manchester, working in Cardiff or even a smaller city. So usually salaries in London will be a little bit higher because the cost of living is higher. 
Then you go to a city like Manchester, still a big city, the salaries will be better than a city, for example, Cardiff or something even smaller. So city plays a major role in the salary as well. Something to remember here is that many jobs at the moment, they're remote. So whether you work in London, Manchester, you can operate from wherever you are. For example, the company I work for is in Bridgend, it's in Wales, but I live in Cardiff. It's very close, but I work remotely 100%. So I could perform from London, from Manchester, from a different country, that's no problem. And you find nowadays many companies, they offer the same benefits as well. If you're comfortable, of course, working remotely 100%. Another consideration is the market situation. These days, for the past three years, the tech bubble was going up. We can see with all the AI, with all these technologies, every big com company is skyrocketing with Nvidia, Microsoft, all these things, they're going high and high and high. So at the moment, there is a big demand. Yes, when you check on Google, you find so many layoffs from the big corporates. So maybe it's worth considering the small startups and small companies because they need you, they need data scientists, they need someone that can make sense of data and bring money for the company or make thought decisions. So instead of always focusing on Amazon, Google, Apple, which would be great obviously to have on your CV and have a big experience, but you can focus on smaller players and those players will give you more opportunity, they will put trust on you and you will have more responsibilities. And that's what you want, especially at the beginning, you want to put yourself into a stress into a challenge so that you can learn and ultimately you can grow. And number five, my earnings. So I recently graduated as a master's in computer science in November 2023 and I got my first job as a data scientist in February 2024, which means five months ago. And I got an entry-level salary, which is £32,000 a year working for an IT consulting firm. It's not a very big company, it's approximately 100 people and that's roughly the average that people get paid as graduates entry level between 30 and 35,000 working in tech. Share with us in the comment section how many years of experience you have as a data scientist and also how much you're earning. It could be a nice topic of discussion that we can have in the comments and see what are the different salaries based on the location, the years of experience and see if all the data that I shared with you today that I got from different sources on the internet really match what's happening in reality. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. That's the best way to support me in my journey on YouTube and I would massively appreciate if you can smash that like button for me. See you in the next video.